You're like the underrated guy. To hell with that. I make plays too. I'm good as hell too. Just because you don't get the certain media attention and people putting you on this pedestal and people view you like, yeah, you're the almost guy. This shit's annoying. We were all kind of a little confused just because like, like, yeah, we ran this play in practice, but we ain't never ran this play in the game. The outside world used to talk bad about the Seahawks receivers. And I know you heard the noise. And what are y'all talking about when people are nicknaming you guys pedestrian? All right, what you got to get hey. off your chest, KJ? So what I, was, is it? I was at the barbershop today, right? And guess who I saw? Who? It wasn't me because I ain't got no hair, so. I ain't neither. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! What are you doing at the barbershop? <laughs> I, lo I got hair, but my hair grows. I mean, yeah, but... Yeah, no, nah, I just gotta get this shaved just, up. Yeah, okay. yeah, I gotta, I gotta you get it lined up. Yeah, I don't. I, I probably should do that. Just, you could use that. I could a shape up. I but wait, you don't go to the barbershop, bro? No, I just, I, I honestly could use a shape up. Take, take I do it myself. When's the last time you've been off. to the barbershop? No, nah. take your head off, bro. You got that, I gotta cut you, my hair. You got that George Jefferson right there? I, get, I do, but I'm waiting to time it up. So. At the basketball game. It right. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, shout out to y'all, Champions of Change. Champion of Change. So guess what I ran into at the barbershop? <laughs> Former uh, teammate? Former Seahawk. <laughs> Who was it? Kaysen Williams. Oh, I Kaysen. actually ran into Kaysen Williams at Loco de Chon in Newcastle. Yeah. Little Mexican restaurant. And I just had flashbacks. You will remember this. This is probably one of the worst decisions. Probably one of the most heartbreaking decisions that I that I saw when I was in Seattle. He had a great he had a great yeah, preseason. Pre this yeah. man balling. Bald. Yeah. Bald. In preseason. Yeah, he did. Balling in the games. Moss, special teams, catching here and there. And we come down. Everybody know you kind of predict what's the roster going to be? Who's going to be here? Who's going to be there? And everybody said Kaysen, he's top five. Kaysen Williams should be top five. And when they cut Kaysen after balling. Remember how Luke was talking about, are we talk, Are we trying to win ball games? Are we trying to make friends and do what's better for the organization? That was a top five move that really had the whole team pissed off. You think something, sorry to cut you off. You think that's something that kind of like changed the trajectory of like the standard? Absolutely. When you look at it, it's not about winning anymore. We know what winners look like and the guys know what people we want in this building when it comes to winning ball games, I want Casey Williams on my football team. I mean, he mossed Xavier Rhodes when we played Minnesota, the yeah. Chargers. Yeah. Balled out. And don't give me that special teams. Oh, he's not valuable on special teams. He was balling on special teams too. He was he was in the same room with you. What you think happened, Jermaine? I don't make those decisions. I don't even know. I thought he I thought he balled out. Yeah. I thought he was gonna make the team. And it came down between him and Tanner. You remember hey, Tanner? Boy. Yeah. Oh, oh, do I? And I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, just, I, I, I'm just I mean, you said, I, I, I don't know. You, and, you, you, and we're not GMs. We don't make the, the calls, but you can look and like, this guy should be here. And so, Kaysen, just from brothers to brother, we appreciate you. When that decision got made, it hurt the whole team. And Kaysen should have been on that 53-man roster in 2016, 2017, whatever year it was. Kaysen been a dog since Skyline. He was a dog at UW, yeah, and man. he was a dog in that preseason. Shout out to Kaysen Williams. And what did you want to get off your chest, Jermaine? Oh, my chest? Yeah, you said you. <laughs> I mean, you came to the show. Trap golf. Well, you, you, want, you want to get up? Every time, G. I'm going to get on, I'm gonna get on KJ. Oh. Every time, G. I look at this podcast, and I look behind you guys. Not only did I not see my jersey up there, <laughs> but I tell KJ all the time, can you please? They're straight, bro. Can you please hire someone? Because I know he got money. <laughs> They're straight. I know he got money, G. I know you see it all out there. You see it over there too, G. Take a look. Take a look too. You see it. Can you please get someone to align? G, G, me and my wife, we watch, we watch the podcast. <laughs> And it's the first thing Marissa always talk about. Like, look at look at look at Puna's jersey and look no, at can't look nobody, at can't nobody see that. I know can't they can't, but they can see. It's straight. We cool over here. Like, look, this one about like three <laughs> inches off the wall. This one's tight on the wall. Gee, it was it, it was G, bad earlier. It, it, it was bad it, earlier. It, it was grinding my gears. G, I, I I kept telling KJ. I'm like KJ, I love the podcast. 
podcast is great. You guys are doing a great job. It's entertaining. But God damn it, if you don't fix those damn jerseys back there and straighten them up. There, there's some <laughs> there's some people that watch every oh. week and, don't and, they com- about- and they comment about the they, jerseys. They talk, they talk, so talk about the jerseys. The thing that's so funny about this is that I just want to let everybody know that Jermaine is such an analytical person. He's so detail oriented, <clears throat> and I know this bothers you bad. G, ain't it bothering Marissa too? If, man, I'm telling you, it's the first thing. <laughs> Marissa go tell me like, can you tell KJ to straighten the? Jo- I'm, hey, I tell him all the time. <laughs> all right, next week because we got a break. We got a break. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend some money. I spent money on microphones, tables. Um, I mean, the thing cameras, is, the fo- it's like the f- sound system, lights. <laughs> It's the focal like, point behind. I know. It's just I like, know. I'm like, I got you. The, the, it, it has got better. It has Appreciate gotten it. better. Appreciate but it. Appreciate the, it. at the beginning, I was like, KJ. Hey, keep me on my square. I ain't mm. opposed to that. Mm. Well, but yeah, bro. Hey, we appreciate you coming on, dog. Yeah, we, thank you guys we, for having me. We about to take it back to 2012. Ooh. 2012. Take me to your draft experience. Or I guess I could say. My non-draft experience? Non-draft experience. <laughs> And bro, what <laughs> led you to choose and see out of you from here? Go to UW up here. Draft comes. Don't get a phone call. How you up in Seattle? Well, I mean, so I spent my draft experience. I mean, the first day, I'm like, mm, this is entertainment. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I ain't going first day. Right. I'm like, second day, saying. like, mm, like mm, maybe, yeah. probably not. Right. Third day, I'm like, okay, this is where I'm gonna like. Save my day. I'm, I'm paying my attention. Day. I felt like I. I felt like I had a solid career. My senior year probably wasn't my best, but I mean, you look at the UW record boards, I'm top three at minimum in most of them. I always mm-hmm. argue with Mario Bailey because he <laughs> he leads uh, the school record for most TD receptions, and I'm behind him. He's at 30, and I'm at 29. Uh. But I always remind him <laughs> that I'm really at 30 because I caught a bubble pass, and they counted it as a uh-huh. rushing touchdown. So did Mario, the, the quarterback, Mario, oh, he threw probably threw behind the line of scrimmage. It's that's, a pass. That's a run. Whatever, Mario. We tied. <laughs> we tied. But I still got love for you. One of the best that UW he ever is. had. He is. But uh, I mean, I spent most of the time I was at uh, my now wife's house by myself. It was we. My little brother was playing at UW. Um, they had their spring game, and I'm sitting there at the house watching, and you. I would say you don't, you know, but you you don't know. But <laughs> teams would call. They'd be like, "Hey, we're thinking about calling, picking oh, you. We got two, you know, the, mm-hmm, the, the mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. they, they try to they squeeze those. Oh, we got mm-hmm. about two picks left. We're thinking about picking you. Just like stay tuned. Really, what they're doing is they're trying to set up for free yeah, agency, agency, trying to recruit you. Like, mm-hmm. oh, these guys were thinking about me, mm-hmm. um, which don't make sense because when they don't pick you, you like, why? What? Like, why are you wasting my time? Yeah, you just don't told call me, me. Like. I ain't going there, but, um, you know, the, the, the honest question, the, the honest answer is my agent who ironically was Pete's agent. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so he actually told me that at first he was like, you know, Seattle's not interested. And I was like, okay. Um, and then, you know, Long story short, who the one that really uh, kind of fought for me, one of my favorite coaches of all time, will ride for him any day. You already Kippy. know. You already know. Kippy, Kippy Brown. Brown. Kippy Brown. <laughs> you know, we had the conversation. He was like, he he stood on the table for me. He fought for me, and so I went there. I looked at the roster. I'm like, okay, like let me see at least what the roster, the the depth. Charts mm-hmm. looking like for the receiver room. Do I got a chance? You know, the, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing about the, the the whole clutch thing too. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna toot my horn a little bit. <laughs> Go toot that. I'm gonna toot my toot horn that a little thing. bit. Toot it. <laughs> Look. Whoa. <laughs> I've been like, you know, you you read some things and people are like, oh, you know, lucky this, like it's lucky that, like. I look back in like my whole career and even like in college and high school, I mean. I've been clutch my whole life. Let like, us know. Let I, us I've know. been clutch my whole life. Let you look at you look at the two thousand uh, uh, nine season against Pete, third and fifteen. I caught two of them. 
Set us up. Field goal. We win. Let them we know. go into four times overtime. I score four touchdowns, still hold the record for UW most touchdowns in a game. Overtime, scored both touchdowns to put us up. Mm-hmm. Clutch my whole life. You mm-hmm. look at the Apple Cup. Mm-hmm. We ain't been to a bowl game and I don't know how long. We throw a goal ball in the end zone with like less than 45 seconds left in the game. Mm-hmm. Been clutch my whole life. And so... Keep keep going. I, I mean, I, keep going. <laughs> Go to the 2013 NFC Championship. 2013, fourth down, fourth and seven, you know, free play. Throw it up. Who caught it? I caught it. I mean, I've been clutched my whole life. Yeah. Um, we can go uh Why we does can that go, make, hold on, hold on. We we can go even uh uh 2013, we can go Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Right before Earl punched it out. Yep. To put us up, throw a deep ball after we just threw a deep ball. Mm-hmm. Throw a deep ball, catch it. Been clutched my whole life. Why do you get that label? Why they piss you off so much? I don't know. Honestly, I, I, don't, I don't know if it was just kind of like the, you know, just, I don't know if it was expectations that people, uh, I'm not sure. Because I get it too. KJ, you're good, but you're not quite good enough. You're like the underrated guy. To hell with that. I make plays too. I'm good as hell too. Just because you don't get the certain media attention and people putting you on this pedestal. And people view you like, yeah, you're the almost guy. This shit's annoying. No, for sure. This shit's annoying. I mean, I, I, to, and to kind of answer your question, like, I think it, it definitely was a drive for sure. Just because, like, I don't know, you just kind of feel like, I mean, I grew up here. You know, I stayed home. I could have left. I almost went to Oregon. Mm. I could have, I could have left. I stayed mm. here. I wanted to represent. My state. I grew up mm-hmm. here my whole life. I wanted to represent um, all the other kids that grew up in my neighborhood and show them the pathway. And you know, you could stay home and still have success. Um, and so, I think with those choices, I mean, you do have the, you know, actually, you know what? There was two things, G, that kind of really changed my whole mindset. One was after having my best year out at UW. You know, as a young kid, you you kind of reading about yourself, so. And I don't think Twitter was as strong at, at that time, but you kind of got the, the the blogs and stuff. Literally just caught the game winner that that year <laughs> against Washington State, sent us to a first bowl game uh, that we eventually that we actually won mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> against Nebraska. But I read one thing. One person was like, "Man, I can't wait till the Jermaine Curse era is done." I was like, "Oh, really? Yeah." And I was like, oh, "That's what my hometown think of me." That's in my head. That's what I was, you know, I'm what, 18 years old yeah. or something like that, around yeah. 19 yeah, yeah. or close to 20. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, when I was in college, I remember my senior year, I, my senior year, I, I struggled a little bit. It was just like, I don't know. I was just mentally, I was just in a different kind of headspace mm-hmm. and just kind of like navigating. Yeah. Um, but one of my coaches told me, he was like, you know, Jermaine, I feel kind of sorry for you. You 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 would be lucky if a team picked you up. And I was wow. like, wow. When I heard that, that's kind of yeah. what switched yeah. everything in my mind. Yeah. I went into, excuse my language, I went into a straight fuck it mode. <clears throat> like, bet. Mm-hmm. And so the rest of that year, uh, I kind of just, you know, you you feel resentful a little bit and you just kind of. You kind of just cold shoulder, like yep. yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. and then I mean, in that bowl game, we played against uh, Baylor. You know, uh, Heisman Trophy when uh, RG three, uh, RG three. Yeah, they yeah. had Josh Gordon, yep. they had Kendall Wright. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I went for like five for two hundred and a touchdown, and I was that was my last game at UW. Uh, and then I mean, but ever since then, my my whole mind frame had had just switched from then and just kind of. Competitively, I think it, it definitely like yeah. changed how I thought. Yeah, and bro, I hate to stay on this like this negative, but this part of your story, like your rookie year, you come in undrafted, you come in, you break your foot, yeah, you get cut, well, yeah. So all this happened your rookie year. What's- so OTAs, which I thought, so I came in. <clears throat> one, I one of the things I felt like was like my biggest uh, strengths was I'm a very smart player. Mm-hmm. Like I knew every position, I knew what everybody was doing. Like I knew yep. the ins and outs. So for me, I'm like, 
I need to know these things because if such and such goes down, like I'm not going to be one of those persons like, oh, I just know this position. I want to get on the field. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, mm -hmm. how can I find my way on the field? So I learned everything. And um, that was my way to kind of get on the field. And so I was having a, I had a strong rookie mini camp. I was having a strong uh, OTAs. And then I break my foot towards the end. And I was like, damn, they about to cut me. And then I know I, I for sure felt it. I'm mm -hmm. like, man, they about to they about to cut me. Uh, we, we're going to have to figure I'm about to be in rehab. Um, but luckily, I mean, they kept me on. I got to rehab. It wasn't that like it was just a, you know, fifth Jones metatarsal yeah. Jones, Jones fracture. Mm -hmm. So it was about six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I missed the first week of camp. I felt like I could have practiced camp, but you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. And I, I truthfully, I thought I should have made the team. I felt like I had a, a strong, you know, mini or a strong training camp. But we had some older dudes. I mean, we had Obo, we had uh, Dion Butler, Golden Sydney. I forgot about Butler. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, he was cool, man. Yeah, I uh, about Dion. those guys, those guys were were vital too because yep. they were they were they were some like solid vets. You know, looked out. Uh, but yeah, they were, we had we had a roster. Mike Williams started there. Mm -hmm. To Braylon Edwards. Oh Lord, To came with them tight I'm glad, you, I'm glad right, you. Well, we'll we'll get to the To. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because I want to talk about that receiver room into 2013. A lot of personalities on that team. Of course, Golden Tate is still there. Doug Baldwin is in there. Like you said, Braylon Edwards is there. And then in the preseason, right? You start talking about um, a. Uh, Terrell Owens, and we, we saw what happened to him. We saw that, okay, I mean, he wasn't the Terrell Owens of before, but it's still Terrell Owens. He can still get down. <clears throat> Look, I know the story come out with about BB jamming his shit up, but he still had it, bro. T.O. was nice. He still had it. T.O. was nice. Look, he he was still fast. He was still, I mean. If he, he, if he makes that catch versus the Denver, Denver Broncos. He on the team. He on the team. He on the, he on the team. team. And, and as a matter of fact, the person that threw him that that pass, because Flynn had an uh, go go look it up. He had an incredible preseason. Matt Flynn, look, Matt Flynn was a baller. I I I, I rock with Matt Flynn too. You don't think so? Look, I tell you, I, I mean, we could argue that, but I'm just saying the preseason that he had was incredible. No, that, he yeah. and Russell had a great preseason. I'm, sure. I'm not saying that, but if Terrell Owens catches that ball. It's hard yeah. to argue Matt Flynn not being the starter week, week one. one. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'm saying. Well, the funny thing is that, like, later in that game, when Russ and I came down, we ran that same play. And I <laughs> <him. laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, T.O., when he first, I was, I don't get starstruck too too often. When I seen T.O., like, dang, this man played with, he played with in the, what, the 90s? And yeah. this man was my teammate. Yeah, I don't, I don't get star show. How was he in the? How was he was he in, cool. In the Honestly, he was cool. Can we get a story? I got yeah. Uh, here, so oh, he, with Stu, you got the Stu story? No, this one is uh, Big Stu, the uh, chef. Big yeah, Stu. He, he, yeah, he shout tried, out to he Stu. Shout out to Big Stu. Play Stu. We go. So, you know, so we were in in a uh, team meeting, and you know, Pete. Pete loves his his jokes. <laughs> yeah. And so you, know, Pete got into into one of his <clears> jokes. Talk about Trufant. Shout out to Marcus Trufant, 253. Talking about Rufus. Uh, the, uh, 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 <laughs> opening the trunk and there goes Rufus. And then everybody's like, true. Yep. Yep. And then he goes on and tells all these other stories. Mike, Mike Moe. Mike Moe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna say that one. We ain't gonna say that yeah. one. Or we ain't gonna talk about Zach. <laughs> Zach yeah. I mean, you can't Justin do that Britt. to the people. At some point, you're gonna have to pay off we'll those Mike Mo stories. Maybe okay. Mike Mo can join us. So, <laughs> so we go up, and and the whole point is to get you to start to like to get you to feel like you going next. So, like he's telling all these these personal stories that were kind of that were fake, and he was like, "This is our safe space. We're gonna come up here." You're going to tell your story, tell you about who you are. So I remember my rookie year, <laughs> he's saying all these things. I'm sitting in that chair. I'm like, don't, what am I going to yeah. say? Like, if he don't choose call, me. Don't call me. Please if, don't call if me. If he choose me, I got to be ready. Yeah. I got I to gotta have a story. Yeah. Good one too. You can't just come up there and just be, you know. Yeah. And so he called up T.O. And T.O. go up there and Pete gives him, you know, Pete mm -hmm. always give him that hug. Give him a hug. Just, hug, hug. Him. <laughs> 
<laughs> Were those real hugs? From the heart. Oh, yeah. From the heart. Ring you? Yeah. From the heart. Okay. T go out there, uh, T.O. go out there, and he's like, you know, I'm from, where, I, where, where is he from? He from, from, any from Alabama? I think it was yeah. Alabama. Yeah. yeah. I'm from such and such, Alabama. You know, my grandmama, shut, shut the, the fuck sit up! Sit, sit your ass down! <laughs> Nobody want to hear your, fuck your story! <laughs> sit down! Everybody just, and we all know, we all know about it. So everybody, everybody, everybody trying to not laugh when he up there, because we all know what's happening. We've seen it. Mm-hmm. And so he go up there, and T.O. just kind of like, be like, no, nah, coach, no, nah, no, nah, I got something to say. Mm-hmm. And he's just standing up there, and like, everybody laughing, we chilling mm-hmm. and laughing, and then... He's still up there. So we all like... And T.O. Like, T.O. started getting mad. He was like, hold up. You call me up. I'm about to tell my story. Yeah, you about, like, about to like, play me like, like this. I'm telling my story. And everybody's like, go sit down. Go sit down. So he started walking up and he stopped. And he looked back and he's like, nah, t- nah, coach. I, I want to <laughs> tell my story. So he starts walking down and everybody's like... Oh, this dude oh, tripping. What in the world is going on? He tripping. And so he go up there. He said, coach, I appreciate it. <laughs> Y'all told me when I got here and signed that I was going to be able to have number 81. <laughs> and I'm sitting next to Golden. Uh, Golden was wearing 81. And I remember this, too, because I remember I was at Golden's crib and T.O. asked Golden about getting number 81. Did he ask Did he ask to buy it? I'm not sure he asked to buy it. I think he asked Golden what he wanted. Hmm. Golden, Golden said 81 grand. <laughs> Golden said 81 grand. So T.O. go up there. Y'all told me I can get 81. And... You know, I asked Golden for uh, the number, and he talking about $81,000 for it. Y'all ain't even paying me that much. He probably wearing it because of me, and I'm mm, like... And T.O. Was, was mad. Like, T.O. was mad. Mad, mad. And I'm hey, looking wait, at Golden... He, but he told Golden he probably wearing it because of me. He said it in front of the team. He, he said in front of team. everybody. He said, Golden probably wearing it because of me. And I, I'm looking at Golden like, like whoa. What, and Golden, like, yeah. what is going on? Next thing you know, it, him and Pete look at each other. They look at us. And they was like, got him. They played us the whole time. <laughs> bro. No. I was like. I'm like, damn, that was good. Hey, Coach Hill ain't never done this. None. He never give anybody the heads up that I'm about to play a prank on you. He usually prank these fools. Go sit your ass down. But when T.O., we, he, he we thought the same off. stigma. Like, he about to start showing out. He tripping. Get him out of here, John Snyder. Get, let him go. So yeah, all, the whole time, whole time. To and Pete they was, was in pranking was, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Good to your, good to your story. That was a great to your story. To was cool. He was cool. People. So, bro, when you look at yourself, we look at the dude that's undrafted, back against the wall. Not only having a phenomenal career and making the team, but just explain like what's your best advice to dudes like. You're back against the wall, but you can still have a dominant career. You can still be that dude, like because somebody right there sitting in your position. Yeah. Like what's what's your best advice for them dudes? You gotta play your role. You got like I think the biggest thing is just like you gotta know your role and play your role until you get your opportunity. And then mm-hmm. when you get your opportunity, like how important was special teams for you your early, early in your career? I mean, it was the only way I got on the field. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember the first thing was uh I had to go down on punt and I was the gunner. And I look, there ain't if there's that's like hard, one, if there's one <laughs> thing to do, like one of the hardest things to do, hard. is go up against two people on a vice. They right there. One right here. Right one there. right here. You right in the middle of them. <clears throat> and, and most of those dudes, they looking at you. They trying to put hands on you. Mm-hmm. And you got to figure out how you gonna get from your spot down to those fields. Fifty yards. But look, this is this is. Mm-hmm. Tooting my own heart. I'm telling you, I'm a smart player. <laughs> I was that left gunner, and we always punted left. Yeah. We always punted left. So I was the left gunner. So my thinking was like, boom, okay. I got out of bounds right here. Now, I can't run straight out of bounds, but... I can make contact. I'm Look, I got a quick... <laughs> I, I had a quick first step. As soon as that ball was height, I'm getting in right into that person's shoulder. I'm dipping in there. I'm going to let him push me out. I got 15 yards to run. <laughs> After that, it was a wrap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to go into practice. I, Jermaine, I want you to take all of us into 
the practice because for some reason people love to hear about i mean i'm not talking about the training camp you know that we all get to see and it's all the music and all that i'm talking about the real practices i'm talking about the one-on-ones I want to get into the one-on-ones that you going up against Sherm, you going up against uh, BB, or whoever it is. Maxwell. I want to know, Max, who, who was it that made you better? Tell me, tell us some stories about those one-on-ones, Jay Lane and all those things. <laughs> tell us what happened. I mean, our one-on-ones, the thing is, it's like we, we had two sets of one-on-ones. We had like in the middle of the field one-on-ones, and then we had like red zone. And most of the time, like each one played out pretty, pretty much the same. Like the in the field ones, I felt like the receivers we gave them work for the Ooh, most you part. Gave, you gave work. I feel like we Sherm gave too. We, Sherm, you, he got that work. Sherm, Sherm got that work sometime, but he gave us. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Sherm, though, this 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 was so hard about Sherm. <laughs> Sherm is smart, so like he he got checkpoints. So you like there's things that like with Sherm. There's things that I had to do to get open with Sherm that I couldn't do with like other DBs. Like, cause I knew how smart he was. So for instance, if I knew I had to run a 15 yard dig, okay. I'm running 14 yards. I'm gonna sit down like I'm running a comeback. Cause I know Sherm, mm-hmm. he's smart. So he's like, boom, he's sending, he run a comeback. And I had to fake a jab step to get him to try to undercut it and to get around. Yeah. So, but the thing is, is like, you can't do that with everybody because you might just beat a normal mm-hmm. corner and you're going to just kind of, you know, you'll, you'll fake the, the comeback, but the player ain't at that level to where when you try to go back inside for the dig, like you're going to just kind of run mm-hmm. into him. Mm-hmm. But like with Sherm is like, you had to play a game with Sherm and sometimes it worked. And sometimes <laughs> it didn't. Did the, did the matchups that coach Carroll put up on the thing, did they do anything for you? Jermaine Curse versus Maxwell, KJ versus Luke. A thousand percent, for sure. Because yeah. you knew you was getting put on the spot and you knew those highlights was going to get shown. And, mm-hmm. you know, you just, you don't ever want to be on the other side of them highlights. Mm-hmm. So Sherm was tough. Who who was the uh, who was the DB in one-on-ones that you and Doug used to just absolutely destroy, maybe? Well, Doug wait, wait, go- wait, so wait, uh, you don't want to answer it? Just, you can say that. That's fine. You no, can say you don't want to answer it? No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, he's my dog. <laughs> but we, we used to tear Jay Lane out. <laughs> Jay, Jay Lane, but look, Jay Lane was a dog, though. Yeah, absolutely. He was a dog. Mm-hmm. But we, 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 we got the best of Jay Lane. Yeah. Uh, I feel like <laughs> I, would, I got the best of... He gonna, he he would not like it. <laughs> I got I felt like I got the best of BB. Oh, Brandon mm-hmm. Brown. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Now, not a lot of people got the best of BB. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who ran into them mm-hmm. to them grips and didn't go nowhere. Mm-hmm. I just used to speed release the hell out of BB every time. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna mess with him because if he get them hands on me, I ain't going nowhere. And BB mm-hmm. hands are so strong. Yeah. If, it, if, you, if he if it's at the line of scrimmage, first two yards is a wrap. It's a wrap. wrap. And bro. But Doug, I mean, Doug went at Jay Lane all the time. Doug and Earl, that was always funny to watch. Earl came down there. Earl went this big, Earl getting this big old stance, low to the ground. I'm like, Earl, this ain't got to work, bro. This ain't happening. And you know how shifty Doug is. I'm like, Earl, like, man, you like back up, bro. Yo, base too wide. His. No, but those those one on one, the thing the about the one on one, like, so going back to the red zone. The DBs got the best of us. Like, oh, really? Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of room. And mm-hmm. Sherm's sitting on every shit. Like I'm saying, Sherm's smart. He's sitting on everything. Like, you don't have to make a miraculous catch mm-hmm. to get it on Sherm. Um, but that's the thing about the one on ones. We did the one on ones all the way at Super Bowl. We were still doing one on ones. Absolutely. And, bro, fast forward, fast forward, because people always talk about our defense. Legion of Boom, number one defense. Cool, we were special. I look at the offense, bro. Y'all were some dogs too. And particularly your receiving core. Yeah. And particularly your receiving core, bro. Tell me about what was y'all mentality approaching the games like, oh, it's all defense, it's all Marshawn. What was y'all mentality when y'all stepped on the football field as a unit? I mean, uh, if you look at it, like 
especially like later later on, like Sid, like Sydney was kind of like the leader of our group. Like he was the OG. Like mm-hmm. he was my OG for sure. He was like my big bro, like mm-hmm. major. Mm-hmm. Um, but the attitude, I mean, it's no surprise. The attitude definitely came from Doug. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know the I think what kind of really started um what really kicked off like kind of like our attitude was when Jay Lang fought Obo like the first couple of days in the training camp our mm. rookie I don't know if you guys were down there it might have been during <laughs> seven on seven yeah uh that one and then uh when Earl hit B Wall I remember that I got remember into that. tough and then later that. that day was Phil and Richard Sherman, I remember, Richard yeah. Sherman. that yeah. was all on NFL Network. But the thing is, is like out there on that field, it's just like we out there. Mm-hmm. But then once you got back into the locker room, like so, so how how did pedestrian become a thing? And you guys were called pedestrians. Now, let, let, let's be real. I, I can go back. I remember like it was yesterday, man. The outside world used to talk bad about the Seahawk receivers, right? And I know you heard the noise. So can you take us into the wide receiver room? And what are y'all talking about when people are nicknaming you guys pedestrians? Well, I think that's what like really came down with like Doug's leadership and just kind of like, you know, Doug, like Doug loved confrontation. Like that's like... <laughs> That's like his his that, that's his his play area. You know what I mean? Does he like it or yeah, I think he yes. like it. Does he like yes. it? I think he like it. I think he like I think he like the challenge of it. I think it 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 brings the competitiveness out of him and like I just think he like thrives in that. Like that's what kind of like amps him up a little bit. And um but the cool thing about it was is like we didn't have to do nothing. All we had to do was just back up Doug. Like mm-hmm. he was gonna be the voice, he was mm-hmm. gonna be the action, like bet. And I mean, he backed it up himself. He didn't really need us, but you know, we kind of, you know, went at his pace. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I forgot who it was. Who was it? Chris Carter? Was it Chris Carter that said it? Was well, it the Chris Carter or, or no, the OG? No, Chris Carter, no, no. When he said calling pedestrians, yeah, yeah. There, or he or, or Dion. It was like appetizer. You know, it's funny too. When I was with the Jets, I saw him in the team meeting, and he brought that up, and because he, he was trying to say like. His media personnel, what is it? You know, personal. He like personal. You know, I I called them. I'm like, Shit. <laughs> nah, ninja. Right? nah, <laughs> man. I don't. It wasn't yeah. personal for you, but it was personal for us. Because yeah. I mean, you got to think about it though. Like, we are we are putting in hours mm-hmm. and putting our bodies out there to you know perform, mm-hmm. and you know when you. Saying somebody's just average. Now, you know, not everybody got the same skill level, but you ain't mm-hmm. average if you're playing in the NFL. Not if you're the one percent, you you're doing something really damn good. Yeah. And yeah. you know, and and then realistically, you know, there's only gonna there's only one, there's only one football. So only so many guys can actually like be that dude. Mm-hmm. Now, some dudes are just out of this world talented and and earned every right to be that dude. Um, but you know, it just kind of goes back to like knowing your role and, and, you know, being elite in your role. And mm-hmm. that's what we did collectively when we, we yep. had our run. Yep. Every, everybody knew their role. Speaking of talent, um, Percy Harvin had a lot of talent. He was a really talented player. I hear a lot about that all the time. What happened? What, what happened in that uh, room? Me and Percy was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was cool with Percy. Like, like me and Percy, we kicked it. We like we was cool. You know, we played the two K. Like, we was solid. Yeah. Uh, now there's some things that happen, which you kind of look at him like. I mean, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I get it. Yeah. Um, every, everybody's not meant to be messed with you. You could crack a joke on KJ all day. <clears throat> you look like security guard. You, 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 you look sloppy. You stink. That weak ass Spider-Man celebration. I could laugh it off. Some people you just don't. You don't. You, you just, just, like, mm, yeah, you just, you just stay just away. Like, when Percy came in the train, well, Percy, how you doing, man? You good? All right, we'll see you later, man. That was me and Percy's <laughs> relationship. <laughs> hey, good see you, my family, family. All right, man, I'll see you later. Keep 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 it cool. Really? You keep it playing. 
And um, that was that was an experience, ex- an experiment that one of the most talented dudes I've ever seen in my life. It was super talented. Zero to a hundred, really quick. quick. I mean, I ain't never seen, I haven't seen anyone really like that explosive. Like he, he's the one. And yeah, he's the one. He was explosive. But um, personality. He, he was the one. But he was not. The not, one. The, not, not the one for us. <laughs> not, not, During, well, not the one to mess with. Or yeah, just like. Yeah, so, yeah. so you mean to tell me uh, a lot of times everybody's always talking about the personalities and how strong willed a lot. And we can go through all the personalities. You mean to tell me out of all the years you guys have been with the team and associated with the team. That Percy Harvin stands out number one. Well, as far as far as like real strong personality, zero to 100. Well, here's the thing, G. We all came in together. Jermaine came in, KJ uh, came in, Sherm. We, like we're we came from rookies to where we are now. Uh, Percy got inserted year three, year four. Like go fit in with these guys. And it, it nah, we we could give grace here and there. We could reel you in. We could I, people know how to shut Sherm down. Cam Chester yeah. got the relationship. When Sherm turned up, I could I could I could slow you down. There was no, there was nobody there for Percy like that. Uh, and I mean, when, when, yeah, you just like, I mean, you know, the personalities. We had so many like alpha male type A personalities on our team, and so you know, you got somebody else who's think who who feels that same way, and those clash. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, I mean, that's kind of tough. Yeah, bro. Let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to your clutch moments. I want to start NFC Championship 2013. We about to go to the Super Bowl. We was getting our ass kicked that game. Y'all remember what was the Oh, what's... against San Fran? Turnover first play. <laughs> like, come on, Russ. <laughs> oh, I mean, anyway. Um, uh, defense make a stop. Uh, something else happened. It's 10-0. And I'm like, hey, this, we got to tighten up. Kaepernick can't be stopped, defense. Them, them... He cannot be stopped. He, when he took off running, I tried to tackle him. It wasn't happening. Malcolm Bobby took a bad angle. It wasn't happening. It was a play made in the fourth quarter. What yeah, quarter? It was a fourth. Fourth quarter. Walk mm-hmm. us walk us through that play, Jermaine Curse, <coughs> Russell Wilson. I mean, it was a fourth and seven. One, I don't like, we were like in field goal range too. So I'm not sure like what happened of why we didn't kick the field goal. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if like Hauschka was like hurt. I don't know what happened. But we went out there, and um, every play, you know, we if someone jumps offside, we did a hard count. Mm -hmm. We all know what we're doing when someone Mm -hmm. jumps offside, except for Doug, because he was in the wrong place. (laughs) Again, (laughs) Doug. (laughs) (laughs) Doug know what I'm talking about. We always joke about that. But, you know, as soon as uh, Alden Smith jumped across the line, boom, like, I'm taking off because I already know, like, this is talk about, like, the the chemistry. I knew as soon as he jumped, Max is snapping. Yeah. And he snapped it. We all run. Doug's supposed to run across the field on his dance around his special. I'm in the scene, and we got to go. And Russ threw a – he threw a dime. And, I mean – Made a play. So I see what you're talking about, Doug, because Doug was right Doug there. To, what Doug, are you supposed to run? Because you and Doug are not supposed to be in the same spot. Doug is supposed to be <laughs> over on the, the far goal post. <laughs> Got know, it. So, <laughs> do, yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. And, and um, rush through a dime. Rush yeah. through, the, the, through the seam and, you know, you make a play. You, you get your opportunity, you make a play. Yeah. It's been clutch my whole life. So... I, you know what? That should be my tagline. Yes, you know what? That, yes, that you should have. be your tagline because I agree that you were clutch, and then we all know what ends up happening. You guys go out there to New York, you uh, beat the Patriots, you no, scored the Broncos. Me. Oh, excuse Broncos. me, oh, excuse me, the Broncos. You beat the Broncos, forty-eight to three, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, you scored a touchdown in there, mm-hmm. Doug. Hey, you guys, you guys did, you did what you're supposed to do, and I'm glad you brought up the part about where you say you're always clutch. Because can I share something with you? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Um, and maybe I'm the only one that's al- alone in these thoughts, but fast forward all the way to January of 2015, the Seahawks are playing against the Green Bay Packers in the NFC Championship. And um, 
Jermaine, it felt like you weren't clutch in that game. It felt like, like it felt like every time I looked up, you were dropping passes and or some kind of miscommunication. So can you take us to that game and what is going through your mind? Now I'm gonna get to the to later. Yeah. But what is going through your mind when you are <laughs> dropping footballs and I'm I tried to. I'm cussing you out. <laughs> I'm cussing you out, Jermaine. What is your problem? <laughs> what is going on with you? I, First one, this question my fault. Last one, <laughs> well, it's my fault. The other two, I had nothing to do with that. I mean, it was to me. But anyways, I mean, <laughs> I'm with you. Like, the, the the you know, especially after the last one. You know, I'm sitting, I ran a basic route, running right through the middle, rest throw it right at my chest. Boom. Bounce off my chest. Uh, ha ha, Clinton Dix mm-hmm. picks it off. And then he slides. And I'm walking over to the, the bench, and I'm just like... Boy, it's just gonna be a long <laughs> night. <laughs> My phone gonna be. Did you think the game was over right there? Nah. Okay. I didn't think the game was over. I like, and the thing is, is when I say like I'm sitting there, I walk to the sideline, I'm sitting there. <clears throat> you really was thinking about Twitter though? No, I was just thinking like <laughs> this is gonna be a, a long evening. Like I like, I mean, you'll feel my, the heat. You'll feel the fourth, heat. It's my fourth target. It's the fourth pick. I'm like, there's gonna be some heat. And the thing is, is like I, I I talk about it here as if like I was thinking like that for a long period of time. That was just probably from the period of me walking off the field yeah. to the bench, and I sit I sit on the bench, and I think you can even see this. And I'm just kind of like looking around, and the thing, the first thing I thought to myself when I sat on the bench was like, "Don't feel sorry for yourself." Mm. Because I think that was like the easiest thing I could have done was sit there and just, you know, felt bad and kind of, you know, dig my, put myself in this hole mm-hmm. and just kind of feel sorry for myself. Did, did you have anybody throughout the game motivating you or was dudes leading you along? Like Jermaine go figure it out. I don't, I don't really feel like I had really anyone like motivating me. I mean, I always sat next to Doug mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, he, Doug, in his normal stuff, like you good, you good, like you know mm-hmm. the normal stuff. But like, I mean, in moments like that, like that, that it, it's gonna come down to you yeah. and the yeah. decision that you want to make mm-hmm. of how you want to go forward with that. And you know, for me, I was just like, all right. I mean, there's we still got time in the game. Um, you just never know. Like, mm-hmm. you just got to be ready. I got to go back out there. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. Mm-hmm. I can't sit here on the on the bench and and just sit there and feel sorry because at the end of the day, I got to go back yeah. out there mm-hmm. and you know I had a choice of what I wanted to do with that going back out there and then, um, you know, we things start going our way, people are making plays and then I'm just like I just got to be ready. So you get to um, this tie game, obviously all the heroic things that happen. You get into overtime. And this is an opportunity to take us into the huddle and tell us to play. Now, Luke kind of explained a little bit of the play. He did tell us that there was an audible in that situation yeah. that ended up happening. Take Which us we made the, based uh, off of uh, earlier that year. Right. Yeah, he told that. But yeah. take us into the huddle and walk us step by step into what happens. Yeah, so we were, I, I want to say we were in 12 personnel. So we had... Me, I was the only receiver. We had two tight ends, uh, running back. I think it was Marshawn, and then we had Will Tukuafu. Mm-hmm. Um, earlier that year, we saw when we got into that personnel that they usually went into like a zero coverage. They always they brought everyone pretty much in zero coverage. Usually, you see everybody lined up on the same level of uh, with the DBs. So earlier that week, we're like, we see this, like we're gonna make this check. Mm-hmm. And we check it. That's Cobra, which was the check. <laughs> <laughs> so you see Russ, you know. And oh, so we it, made the it. check. So when we went out, and the thing is, I see it. So I'm out there. I lined up. I see it. I'm like safety. Two safeties are low. Uh, the corner is pressed on me. Usually, when you're in like a cover zero, not mm-hmm. everyone's pressed because if you get beat, it's a wrap. There's mm-hmm. nobody back there. Mm-hmm. He's pressed <clears throat> up on me. I see the safeties. I see the other corner. They're all low. So I'm like. This is the look. And so I'm like looking at Russ. I'm like, like, are you, 
you gonna check this? Like, cause I see it too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he he makes the check. He goes, Cobra will uh goes on to the other side mm-hmm. and he snipe snaps the ball. And like I said, like <clears throat> You know, I might not be the fastest, but I got quick first step. Yeah. <laughs> and so I knew I got, I'm like, a bet. I need, I got a post route. I need to get inside because if you're in cover zero, you as a DB mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can't let them get inside. Beat inside. Mm-hmm. I get inside and then, you know, I run my post and didn't clutch my own life. Wait, wait, wait. Before it's slow down. Slow yeah, down. yeah, yeah. I want to slow that slow one down. down. Before the back. ball is snapped, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. in your mind, you like, yes, I'm getting the ball. I know I'm getting the ball for sure. You know you're getting the ball. Yeah. You know what you've been doing all game. No. You forgot about it. You ain't thinking about that. Like, yeah. I'm out there. Like, when you out there, like, you just locked in. Like, there's, I don't know, things happen way too fast for you to kind of be sitting there thinking about, mm-hmm. like, what has already happened at the end of the day there's nothing i could have done about that but mm-hmm. you know at the end of the day now what are they do people talk more <clears throat> about that catch or do they talk about yeah, those targets and so you get you release them you you beat them at the line i beat them inside talk to me and we running i i kind of got to step on them a little bit and i know the ball's coming and russ is probably one of the best deep ball throwers there is mm-hmm. in this game Mm-hmm. If there's one like if there's one person I want to throw a deep ball, like Russ is probably one of the best deep ball throwers in the game. He has tremendous touch. The like he the ball, the trajectory of it, the nose coming down, like he throws yeah. dimes on yeah. the deep ball. Yeah. And you know, we're running side to side, and then I see the ball and you just, you just make a play. So it happens. It uh, happens so fast. But, but when you see the ball, I, 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 look, man, I've never had this type of moment, man. When I've rewound that play, it, it's a beautiful thing. But when you see the ball, do you think? Are you hoping, or you just know, like, no, nah, that ball is mine? Like, it, what's mm-hmm. in your mind right there? Mm-hmm. It happened too fast. <laughs> really? It, it happened so fast. There ain't no slow motion, like. You know, like, oh, this is the game. Where-. No, like, it happens so fast. Honestly, I think if you slow it down, you, I don't, even, I can't even see the ball. You, I'm looking like this, and the ball in my hands. And he stick his arm out. He stick his arm out. And you, you ain't feeling none of that. I ain't feeling none of that. <laughs> and then, I ain't feeling on my back. <laughs> I ain't feeling none of and that. And then you catch it, you go down. I mean, obviously the crowd erupts. Did he say anything? Did he, did he, you hear him say nothing? No. Anything? No. Jermaine threw I, the ball in the stands. Look, I, where so, that ball at? I got it at home. Oh, you got it? Yeah, I got it at home. Why you throw it? I think that was just like, I think that was just like the release of every emotion that I was feeling throughout that whole game. G, hmm. we've had tons of moments in CenturyLink Stadium. Oh, man. That moment, oh man, hands down, is number one. That is the number one moment that we had in our in our era, it's, and it's not even close. Let me, let me. So you, you think you think that moment was something for your era? Let me tell you about that moment for me. That moment changed my life. I'm not here today if you don't catch that and you guys go to the Super Bowl. Why not? It, to to simplify it is. I was told that if the Seahawks were to win that game, that I would have an opportunity to go down with uh, the Seattle Sports Station mm-hmm. down to the Super Bowl mm-hmm. to cover down there. That's why I was able to go down there. But if you guys don't win, that never happens, and I probably never get on radio. Gee, <laughs> we talking five turnovers. Yeah, bro. Against Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, <laughs> NFC Championship, back to back Super Bowls, onside kick, <clears throat> two point conversion of Luke Wilson, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> oh, goes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we can we like back that up? Underrated play was that two point. That ain't underrated. I I don't think people talk about it enough. That ain't underrated at all. I I don't think people talk about it enough. Did you guys know it was coming? What the two point? Did you know we had, you to. had to go did for two? We had to. No, no. But did you know the play? Why would he know that? No, I didn't. No, no. I, well, did I you, knew the play. You knew the play? It was a sprint out to the right. It was a sprint out to the right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah, you knew it was coming. Yeah. Not to, it was, it was not supposed to go to Luke. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. yeah. And he threw that ball up. And I, I mean, now this is like maybe because I wasn't involved with it. Like I wasn't targeted, but that's a ball that I looked up and that was slow motion. Yeah. I, was I looked at it. And then I looked at what uh, Clint Dix did. And I'm like, yeah. he just let him catch the ball. The ball kept, it kept floating. Like, Rush it kept going threw, back. Rush just threw it up. Mm-hmm. And Luke was right there. I mean, I you say it's not unrated. I don't think no. he get talked about it. Because they go down and, and kick they three. kick the field goal. Mm-hmm. And Rodgers, we don't they, get that. We went robber every play. Man to man, every play. Dice, 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 field goal. I'm like, dang! Overtime. Overtime. Here we go. Let's play ball, baby. Don't <laughs> catch the big go ball to set us up. First play. Yep, on the In, right side. Inside go. Mm-hmm. And then the next play was the... And, bro, the way that we all ran onto that football field, the whole team ran. I just want to hug you now. I, we were just hugging this dude. I'm like, yeah. I, 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 yes. literally, I, I cried literally from like the next 25, 30 minutes after that. Oh, you really, you cried? Bro, you don't see the end? Bro, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't, yeah. I, and the thing is, it was like, I don't think it was, I don't think I had processed that we had won. I think it was just like every emotion that I had of just like what happened in that game. Mm-hmm. What how it ended, and I don't know. I was just on the. I don't. I don't <clears throat> crazy like emotional roller coaster. I, 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 uh, look, make no mistake. Sometimes I don't maybe give Russell Wilson some credit, but if there's one thing that if I could, if he was sitting here right now, that I would say, when it comes to you have been clutch, but when it comes to clutch situations, mm-hmm. there's something about Russell where he is just a different human being and where he just is like, I think he's one of the top quarterbacks to ever play the game in clutch moments. And finish, I would say in finishing a half or finish or finish the fourth. Finish, finish, it, look, if there was, if Russ had that ball and it was like the last drive or like last two minutes left in the game and it was like going down, I don't think there's any more danger, danger rest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's more like anyone more dangerous than a person like rest. Like literally, even when like I left Seattle and I'm watching and I'm like, if these dudes get a two minute drill and Russ got the ball, more than likely he going down to score. Should be a rep. He's going down to scoring. and he did it time after time. And the funny thing is though, like Russ trusted me. Like, it's funny because, like, I wasn't the number one guy. Doug was our number one. Um, then it was probably, like, Golden or Sydney. Mm-hmm. And then when Jimmy came, he was too, I was, like, number three, maybe four sometimes. Mm-hmm. But when there was, like, some sort of clutch, like, some, like, play we need to make, like, I will say, and I'm forever grateful, but especially in that game, um, he kept coming back to me. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, even from rookie minicamp and, uh, you know, like a bunch of stuff happened, you know, all through the season. And, you know, I don't want to call it maybe a fallout with Seattle and like all this stuff. I will say like he kept coming. Like some people talk about we played New Orleans. In the playoffs? In the uh, No, no, not in the playoffs. But we played um, in New Orleans. I think it was uh, Halloween break, but we lost. Mm-hmm. But we had the last play and Russ threw me the ball in the corner that. of the end zone. I remember that. I remember that. I tell you, I was about that far of my toe not touching the ground for getting two feet in. Because I got Mm -hmm. one foot in. Mm -hmm. I was about that far away from catching my other toe in the end zone to win that game. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's... And And the thing about him, too, is like throughout the game, no matter what the situation is, he's the same dude. Let's keep fighting. Let's keep believing. No. No, yeah. Yeah. For sure. And like I believe that that just, you know, exemplified like I'm gonna keep going to my dude. I'm gonna keep trusting him. That's what I saw out of Russ. I like that's the, what I saw. I, I love when KJ said, let say, uh, let's fast forward. So let's fast forward to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Down in Glendale. Super Bowl forty nine, KJ. So I just wanna I just yeah, want to take a drink. Right <laughs> 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 you might need a little water for this. 
I want to go to your amazing, fast forward all the way to your incredible <laughs> catch. By the way, they've been playing that lately on social media. You've been seeing that? They've been playing your catch. Yeah. Uh, go all the way to that catch. Take us through that moment, what happens, and then go beyond the next play and the next play. Well, the thing is, like, before that uh, that play, there we had a third down earlier in the game. It was thrown to me. I had the ball. Malcolm Butler knocks it out. Boom. So in my head, I'm like, damn, let one go. So, you know, we're driving down the field. And like I said, like, I don't know. Like, for me, I think what Pete did a great job is – he created this environment where, like, everything – he always talked about championship opportunity, championship opportunity. Cha- mm-hmm. This is a championship game, championship mm-hmm. game. So mm-hmm. I think for all of us, it's just like, you know, we get you get into these moments. It's like you never really think of it as, like, a big moment. You just, you're just out there. You're in the zone, you know. You know, we've trained our subconscious level, like – to a T now with how, you know, we talk with each other, how we talk to meetings and just kind of like our mindset. Mm-hmm. And so with that play, um, it's probably one of the not so good deep balls that Russ made it through. It was a little underthrown, but like I said, you know, a moment where we needed to get down the field, like he, he threw me the ball. And so I, like, I saw the ball and um, I went up for it. Malcolm Butler kind of got a little tip on it and I'm falling backwards. And, um, I just, I like, I never like lost sight of the ball. Like Mm -hmm. I just always saw the ball. And so I'm falling, I hit my, my land on it. My neck is kind of jerking back and then I still see the ball. And so like, I'm trying to bobble on in the thing. The one thing I wish I could change about that is if I, when I caught the ball, if my I was turned the other way because mm-hmm. I kind of had to, I like, I, was, yeah. I caught the ball in the end zones facing that way. So I had to like awkwardly get up. Like if I yeah. was facing the other way, I'm just getting up and I'm like backpedaling at that point to try mm-hmm. to get in the end zone. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was facing towards the end zone and I don't know, like even my reaction after the game or after uh, that play, I'm looking at the sideline, like what's the next play we about to run? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, I'm not even processing like what even just happened. I'm like, I know I made a play. I know we down here. Yeah. Like, did did you get out of bounds? I did. You got out of bounds. Yeah. Keep going. So. <laughs> Keep going. So I mean, so the next play, um, I watched the last episode uh, with Luke. You know, we hand the ball off to Marshawn. Um, Marshawn honestly is one block away from getting in the end zone boom he falls on the on the two yard line or something on the one yard line so we get in the huddle we're in the huddle and 11 personnel i'm like okay well the we pretty much ran in the same formation me and i forgot who was um it wasn't lock that first play it was somebody else that was stacked behind Chris matthews uh, I'm not sure it was Chris Matthews, but Chris Matthews, man, talk about a guy who had an opportunity. He bought out. <laughs> yes, he did. He might be Shady. Super Bowl MVP low key. Like yep. he had like 130, a mm-hmm. touchdown. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he was showing now. He? he got busy that game. Mm-hmm. And so kind of to rewind a little bit on that. So when Chris, so when we were playing them, they were playing man the whole game. First half of the game, BB is guarding me. Revis is guarding Doug. Mm-hmm. Chris Matthews, I think you want to say it was Logan Ryan at the time, mm-hmm. was guarding Chris Matthews. Mm-hmm. Chris started going crazy. Mm-hmm. They were like, BB, we need you on this big dude. BB came, switched over to Chris, excuse me, and that's when Malcolm Butler came in. Mm-hmm. So Malcolm, the whole second, pretty much the second half, he was guarding me. BB was guarding Chris. Revis was still on Doug. Um, so to fast forward, so we hand the ball off to Marshawn. He's down at the one. So we get into, we, we're we huddling up, 11 personnel, and then we call the play Halo. That's the play we we, mm-hmm. we ran. And I don't know, we were all kind of a little confused just because, like, 
Like, yeah, we ran this play in practice, but we ain't never ran this play in a game. Like, we ran a pick play, you know, in a game, but it wasn't to this, Mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't this pick play, Mm -hmm. you know. And so we break the huddle. Everybody's a little disoriented a little bit. Doug's on the other side or wrong side, so he's running over there. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we line up. I got BB right in front of me. Mm-hmm. And then I see Malcolm Butler in my head. Okay. I'm like, Malcolm Butler guarding me. Cause you know, in mm-hmm. stacks, you either you got mm-hmm. three things uh, or two things. Really. You either play topper where the mm-hmm. point guy's taking the back guy and the back guy's taking the front or you locking it. He's taking you, he's taking him. So we're in the, we're in the stack. And so I'm like, boom, Malcolm's been guarding me this whole time. BB is guarding the guy behind me. Now, I don't know whether if they switched it, if they locked it, or if they went topper or whatever to switch who they covered. So I'm like, boom, this is easy. Like, BB right there. I I'm, I just got to get him. I just got to disrupt BB. So I run through BB's um, shoulder mm-hmm. and try to, you know, pick BB because he's the guy oh. that's guarding behind me. Now, what I will say... Mm-hmm. Like as shitty as that play was, you got to give Malcolm Butler credit for that play. Mm-hmm. Like why? He made a play. He broke on the ball and he made the play. He read it. So you didn't think BB was covering you? You thought BB had lock it? Lock. Damn! Mm. I never knew that. Wow. Because wait, to re-explain it, we call it, I think that we call it lag. So the the BB should have had like we call that lag. Yeah. That's that's 90% of the time that's how they play it. Yeah. Mm. And the way they played it was completely opposite. They played it opposite. Well, well they can they? play either way. You can play either way. You can't play you can play either way. Um but either and, him, either BB and Malcolm communicated. Usually they they they, yeah. they do that lock or like that. They do some sort of communication to kind of tell you who's got who. Mm-hmm. Um but if we going off the whole second half, I'm like Malcolm Butler got he he been guarding me this whole second half. I see, I see. BB's been guarding the other guy, which you know I think Chris might have been in the play before, might have not. I can't remember. Um, so I'm like, boom, like I'm picking BB. He's, so I, I know hindsight 2020. If you knew they were doing it the opposite way, what would you have done with your pick play? I would have, if I knew different what they were doing, I would have taken a more angle inside. Yeah. But and the thing let, is, is like I, I went inside, I went inside of BB's shoulder, so his left, my left side. But BB, like I'm telling you, BB's strong. Like when he get them hands on you, and so I'm running inside, and he's kind of like pulling me. Mm. You know what I mean? And then Malcolm saw saw it, do, and do you? Is there any part of you that thinks that? What do you? I mean, we don't know, but. What do you think BB is thinking on that play? Do you think he kind of has an idea of what is about to happen? I don't know. That's a good question. I I think he knew. I BB. think he he yeah, had BB. to like he well he I played mean, the play. He played with us. He, he, played, he played the play. Yeah, he played the play. Um, and when you're on defense, you just got to take your shot. That situation, just do this, and we go we go live with it. We go live with it. So so and so and, so, and the, you know the like. Post Super Bowl, like a couple, they talked about they they practice the play. They practice the one when you have two receivers. He runs out, kind of picks, and this guy runs in. We were stacked, yeah, right, like this. Yeah. So they show the film. I'm like, I mean, like, yeah, you practice the pick play, but that that wasn't even the play we different like, look. We it was ran. a, it was a way different look. We were stacked. I'm taking BB right here, and Locke is coming right under there. I mean, a lot of people run it, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, once I got into BB, he kind of starts tugging me a little back. I'm trying to run through him, and Malcolm read the play and broke on it. This this is my last question, and we can move on. But Chris Matthews, yeah, why was he in the game? That's a good question. I mean, I you know, you asked your question like in that situation, you know, are you not targeting a Doug Baldwin? Are you not targeting a Chris? I, I don't know. It's just kind of a, a situation. I don't, I, I don't know why he was not in the game. 
Because coaches, receivers, coaches make subs. I'm not trying to blame, not trying to point the finger, but okay. Yeah. All right. That's that. I got a question. Do do you still feel haunted by that game? Like when you watch it, like. Bro, I, I still tear up to this day about that. You do? Absolutely. When Luke started talking about it, I started tearing up the other day. That's, that's. Deep. Yeah, that's, Deep. That, Deep. that hurts me to this day. I don't know if people can feel it when they watch this, but I want to explain something to you. Um, I wasn't there on the field. I don't know what it's like, what you guys have experienced. But I do know that when we talk about this play and we try to dig into it, the energy in this room goes, whew. it was just like that with Luke, and it's just like that right now. It is a... Is it? I, well, feel, it, I feel it with him for sure. <laughs> you, but you don't... Does, does the play haunt you? You know, like, now... I don't say like I don't say like it gets at me like it might with others. Like, you know, I don't know. Like what the thing the thing that I think bothers me the most about it is I feel like we can't celebrate our first Super Bowl. We can't. We fucking can't. Like the way we fucking we, can't. We can't celebrate the first Super Bowl like how we want to because no matter what, we can't. Oh, but the, the the next year, like all, it's like it's just like a it's a cloud that just hangs over the, that first Super Bowl, bro. Because nobody's ever gonna just talk about the forty three to eight. They're always gonna talk about they'll talk about it at first, but then the next year is yeah. always gonna follow. Up. Yeah. So I did right. say forty. I did say uh, forty eight to three earlier. So. Yeah. But go ahead. I right, let's let's keep the train moving. We we right. look. We want to keep you too long, bro. But um. You spent how many years in Seattle? Seven, six, six, six years. Six years. Before we go to the Jets, before we go to the trade, is there anybody like we about giving each other love, giving each other flowers? Is there anybody you wanted to thank and you like? I really appreciated this person or this these people in the building. Really quick, I would say Sidney Rice, mainly because. Uh, he was like, when I first got there, you know, me and Doug was cool. Me and Doug didn't get really tight until I want to say probably about like year three. But like when I first got there, Sydney was like the guy that like took me under his wing. Like I kicked it at his house every day, whether he made me get a wing stop or not. I'm like, <laughs> I'll go get it because I'm coming over there anyways. Mm -hmm. Um He's the one that kind of just really showed me how to be a pro and um, really kind of showed me the ropes and kind of like guided me um, how to go about myself and my opportunities. And then I would say after that, I would, we were talking about it earlier, I would say it would be definitely like the D-line. Like one thing I don't think a lot of people know about me um, is I got along with like Everybody on you the was team. that you was that dude. I kicked it with <laughs> yeah. Hauschka, John Ryan. I kicked it with the D line. I kicked it with uh, you know, it was an underrated group that I, I kicked it with. Tough was the tight ends, and uh, <laughs> you give me an actual Luke like me and me Luke, especially when Jimmy uh, Graham was there. I kicked it with them. Tough. Um, what the D line mean to you? The D line, I think. That was just like it's such a weird dynamic of how, like how that even like came about because like even outside the facility I I, I kicked it with like Big Red Me Band Truck Driver um, I kind of stayed away from Clem because <laughs> Clem Clem was kind of mean so he just like and he was that best so you're like ah. yeah. but Clem was cool too like Clem would just. Like Clem just messed with you, and yeah. so I was just like, ah, I'm gonna stay know. away from this dude. Yeah, let me just say, I'm gonna no. just like sit on this side of Mo Kelly's office, <laughs> so Clem won't start getting on my head. Um, no, but like you know, Big Red, he he was a huge uh, person that just kind of you know, mm -hmm. it was more so in just like hanging out sessions and stuff, like on the road, kicking with them, and you know, just being around them. I think that hang I hung out with a lot of defensive players too, mm -hmm. and I think that just kind of gave me my edge, especially on, 
special teams. Who did you sit with in the back of the bus? All defensive players. I did. It was Curse, Shed, Mike Mo, yeah. KJ, Bobby. Yeah. Bobby was always in the back. Always, always on the roads. Yeah. Jermaine Curse, the only offensive dude in the back with I don't us. I don't know why. Uh I don't know why I, I like just drew to the defensive defensive guys. Like even outside of the facility, we we always kicked it tough. Yeah. Anybody anybody that is not a coach and or a player, like is there a staff member inside of the Virginia Mason Athletic Center that you would like to give some props to? Anybody that was real cool and instrumental in your career when you were here in Seattle? I would say, I mean, Mo Kelly. I mean, everybody, you know, connected really well with Mo Kelly. But honestly, a guy that I spent a lot of time was was in EK's office. <laughs> and, I mean, through ups and downs, like, I, you can always find me after practice in EK's office. Like, I don't know, that was just kind of like that just safe space to kind of just – like let your not necessarily let your yeah. guard down, but like you know, just relax your shoulders. You know, you're just gonna be able to chill. You're gonna chop it up with Ek, uh, with Darren and and uh, Drew and, and Chad. Chad. Yep. Like all those guys. Like a lot of people. The thing is, like what I noticed big time, especially, and we'll probably talk about this is like from when I went to the Jets, it was like man, like everybody in that building, like you had a relationship mm -hmm. with everybody. You know. Uh, with Rich, Strick, uh, um, CJ, CJ Tank. Tank, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, you kicked it with, outside of the facility with these people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I think that's what was really special and is special about playing in Seattle is, you know, it's just like that that culture and that yeah. those relationships. And the thing is, it's like, if you go there first, you spoil. <laughs> you spoil, boy. You ain't trying to go nowhere no. else. Well, you don't know. You think yeah. you, you know. Hear, you hear stories. Mm. You think and, you know. And bro, tell me, to my knowledge, there were trade rumors about Jermaine Curse. Jermaine Curse may get traded, traded, traded. And but there was conversations like, you cool, your spot is safe, you good, you'll be a Seahawks this season. And then when you come to the, the building the next day, Jermaine Curse traded for Sheldon Richardson. Yeah. Were you well, blindsided by that? So the the thing was is like I remember I forgot who we were playing with, uh playing against during the preseason. And I, I had joke I had made a joke to Doug. I'm probably gonna get Doug in trouble, but I had made a joke <laughs> to Doug. I'm like, man, they probably gonna trade me. And he gave me a look. And I was like, What 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 you know? And he just kinda he can't gave me a look and he was just like you know, there, there's some rumors, and I'm like, okay, I think it, uh, there was rumors about Jay Lang getting mm -hmm. traded, and then so I like had made a joke, and that's when he gave me a look. Mm -hmm. And so you know, we're going, uh, we're we're going through training camp, and we get to the last preseason game, and I remember I was sitting, uh, we were uh, we were doing the warm ups and stuff, and John Schneider came over to me, and he was like. I always talk to him like right before we were going back in, and he yeah. kind of gave me nudge. He's like, "Hey, don't don't believe the the whispers." I was like, "All right, like, cool, I appreciate that, you know." And mm. so I'm like, "Okay, there might be a little like, but you know, you gotta like, I I this is my fourth year going on my fifth year, I think, or I yeah, going on my fifth year." Yeah. And so I'm like, "Okay, like, you know how the business is, so you don't totally let your guard down." But yeah, sure enough, you know, that weekend, because that was the fourth preseason game, and you know, we get the weekend off. And of course, you know where I was at. I was on the golf course. Um, and agent called me up, was like, hey, they're gonna trade you to to the Jets. And so like I wasn't completely blindsided because I kind of knew, I kind of knew there was some, you know, chatter about it happening. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't like completely blindsided. Maybe just like a little bit after the conversation with John, yeah. and then, you know, that night, literally that this, night, that night, that I night, on, I was on that night, I was on the plane. I went. I Damn. called my wife. I was like, "Hey, I'm going to New York." <laughs> she was like, "Okay." And I just had my first child, literally, a month before that, and so get on the the plane. KJ, this was a week before our first game. I've no, bro. I know. This was a week before our first game. 
So I get into New York, and uh, the coach told me, he was like, by the way, you gonna, you, you playing this week. Who the head coach? Uh, Ty Bowles. Oh, Ty Bowles. I rock, hey. Yeah, he cool. I, 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 rock, with, I rock with Ty Bowles. Like, he, w- he was as solid as can yeah. be. He was in a shitty situation himself. Mm-hmm. Was in a shitty situation over there. Yeah. Um, and so you didn't even get a chance to say, all right, fellas, I'm out. Bye. I'm going to see y'all. Y'all ain't see me. I didn't see you. No, I was out that night. Got in. I instantly got into the playbook. Luckily, that playbook, I mean, our offensive coordinator was John Morton. He was under yeah. Pete. This is this is why I like the, the coaching trees. Because, yeah. I mean, I ran into so many people that were just under Pete. Um, and so... They ran the same offense I ran in college and uh, with with Beth. So I'm mm-hmm. looking at the playbook. I'm like, bet. Like, <laughs> I knew this playbook better than half of the people uh, in the locker room, yeah. in the receiver room. And we had yeah. a young group. We had a young, young group. And so for me, you know, that first season, I was just like treading water. I'm like, we got here a week before. Like, let's just go play. And there was, and I ended up actually having like, I had my best year statistically, numbers yeah. wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won like five games, six games. But Sam Darnold. No, nah, it was Josh McCown that first year. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Josh, cool peoples too. Yeah. I, I mean, I had some real yeah. solid people, and I think that's what made my first year with the Jets pretty solid. Like I had Matt Forte. That's my dog. Demario Davis. Yep, Double D. That's my dog. He's a good like, dude. Man, he was solid peoples. Uh, so I had a, I had a. That first year was was cool. I mean, I got thrown into the deep end from the get go, but you know, I was swimming. You know what I mean? It's cool. I was swimming, and that next year though, boy, <laughs> got real. It got real. <laughs> like you, you know, you see how just the organization works. You know, <sighs> Matt Forte he retires. Demario he goes to the Saints. You know, and so now you just kind of like trying to find you know your solid mm-hmm. people, and we we had some real cool people in the locker room, but it wasn't the same. And, you know, for me, I'm trying to, like, bring some of that, you know, mm-hmm. culture. Mm-hmm. And then you just, it just ain't the same because not everybody thinking. And then they look at you, they look at you like, oh, this guy think he know it all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, you know. Who was it, Robbie Anderson? Robbie Anderson. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was tough. He was a tough person. Like, our personalities were just <laughs> complete opposite ends. And I and you know what I yeah. I will say like there's moments I kind of look back and I'm like damn I didn't I could have been such a better leader in like this situation um, so I like I kind of look back and some things where I'm like damn I could have been way better I could have done it this way mm-hmm. done it that way but at the time you just you you try to handle things the best you could but man that's after that second year in New York I was like done like i was done with football i'm like i don't really um, i don't like it i don't i'm like it, it took, you, it, took your love away from the game it it, it yeah. just it man mentally i was just like in a hole like you know it's bad when you just like damn like i gotta get up and go to this facility and you just kind of like mm. i'm and over so, it yeah yeah i was just over it. like uh so you so you obviously you leave out of uh, New York and then you go to Detroit and then Detroit. I will say though, Detroit I think was probably the best thing that happened to me before I retired. Mm, wow. And I say that so it's kind of funny, you know, where I'm at uh, this thing called a uh, PAO Players Athlete mm-hmm. Outreach, and all these people play for Detroit. They're like, bro, whatever you do, <laughs> don't go to Detroit. It was awful. And uh, so I'm like, okay, like, you know, if I'm already in my head kind of like, I'm ready to like kind of hang them up. You know what I'm saying? My, my love for football was totally lost. Um, and so Bev mm-hmm. calls OC. me up. Mm-hmm. He's an OC mm-hmm. in Detroit. And he's like, he's, you know, he's kind of feeling it out. And so I, I end up going out there doing a workout. I actually even passed on a workout with Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm I'm like if the situation like if the situation isn't like you know how I I kind of wanted it to be or like I'm just not gonna do it. It's, I mean I heard Luke say it's like 
I'm not going to put myself mentally and physically through something mm-hmm. that isn't going to be, you know, a positive mm-hmm. uh, outcome. And so I ended up doing the workout with Detroit. I ended up signing with Detroit like weeks later after the workout because I'm like, I ain't doing it for that minimum. I don't care if it's a hundred dollars or a dollar more. I'm like, I'm not doing Fuck it because yeah. like, I'm I'm ready to I'm, I'm good. ready to hang I'm up. Good. Talk to Bev, and I, I I went there because I really rocked with Bev. Um, you know, it's it's funny. I didn't think I rocked with Bev at the beginning, <laughs> but like towards the end, oh, yeah. like I like we were, and I mean we still talk yeah. to this day. And I think it was the best thing that happened to me because that locker room. I mean, you had Slay, you had Diggs, mm-hmm. you had uh, Marvin Jones, mm-hmm. Danny Amendola. Like, I, I felt like I came into a locker room where it was just kind of like, like, this is the locker room. This is like the culture. Like, you kind of, you just felt it. Mm-hmm. You just, it just felt differently. Started enjoying football. I get boy, I was so out of shape when I came back. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Bev yeah. brought me in his office and he was like, yo. <laughs> he turned on the tape. No, he didn't turn on the tape, but he 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 looked at the the I physical. Oh, the all the oh, physical. He was like two fifteen. I mean, I was already kind of like two fifteen, but I was <laughs> up a little bit. And I'm like, I'm like. He looked at it. Yeah. He was like, "This is you, and this is where everybody else at." I'm like, "Look, I could change that, but this one." <laughs> so I mean, oh. I took. I was there for like three days. Went to mini camp, two OTAs. We went on the summer break. Came back. I was in shape. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we practiced uh, against the Patriots um, that that uh, that preseason game, and that's when I kind of started. Bev kind of brought me aside. He's like, "Look, like I need you to kind of get going." I'm like, "Bet, I got you." I started making plays, started getting my swagger back, confidence going. Like, I'm I'm making plays. Then we get into the preseason game, and I break my leg. <laughs> Blocking, and you know what's funny too? Kippy Brown always told us to never look back. You know what? I didn't mm. look back, Kippy, and I got my leg broke. <laughs> and that was your last ever play. Yeah, and the funny thing is, first person I saw, first person laying down, I look over to my left, and I see Mike B. Michael Bennett. A, Michael Bennett, because he was on the Patriots, mm-hmm. and I saw him, and he came over, and the first thing I was like, "Hey, bro, I'm done. My leg is this way, and everything." And I just looked at him, I'm like, "I'm done." And I can go into a whole deeper story about that with a conversation I had with Sherm before. Like, I don't know. It just kind of played out in a, it, it kind of played out in the right moment. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Right then and there, you know. I already know. Yeah. Yep. So. With well, um. But. Now I'm into something else. <laughs> yeah. we, ain't about, we ain't about to do this whole thing and talk uh, about what not- I'm. We ain't about to do this whole thing and talk about what I'm doing now. No, yeah, keep going. Oh, yeah, he was he was about to try to wrap it up. I thought you was getting tired. No, no, no. no, no. no. Oh, what time no. is it? We we good. <laughs> I Evergreen. Go. You can add golf club. So like so post retirement. Yeah. Now Gino, Gino, how much I love golf, um, all day every day. But I I I I went to UW, try to do the coaching thing for a little bit. No, nah. I'm like so I need, I need to figure out something like uh, I want to spend my time doing. And so, um, I met up with a uh, got connected with a buddy. He actually caddies on tour right now, and we created Evergreen Golf Club. And honestly, like I'm probably having like some of the I'm having the most fun I've had in like such a long time. Like, people love golf, but like, you obsessed with it. man. It's just every day, and the the greatest thing is, is too, is like, I get to go to Evergreen. I I mostly kind of deal with, uh, or just kind of be around like a lot of the juniors and stuff. Um, but I don't know. I just I just love being there. I love being around juniors. I love being around our members. You know, I, I love just playing. I'm competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, or I try to be competitive. It's a tough game, but something like I'm super passionate about. Mm-hmm. And there was one question you asked me, like, and I think it's, it's I think it's different for everybody because, like, would you say you love like you love football? 
You love football. Love it. Remember what I told you when you asked me that? Yeah. What did I say? Do you remember? Mm-mm. I was like, I mean, I, I like playing football. I love being competitive. I'm a competitor. Mm-hmm. But the thing, like, I think why I, I transitioned well into the evergreen thing is because, like, with, like, I, I enjoyed playing football, enjoyed competing. But, like, for me, it's like football ain't going to ever love you back. Mm. And for me, I'm like, I can't ever love something that ain't going to love me back. I got love for it. It's the thing is like, like, I love you. Mm-hmm. It's different than I'm in love with you. I got love for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or I'm in love. I'm with in you. love. You, you got to love football to an extent. You do. You got to love football to an you extent. Do. I've seen and, some guys like. But the thing is, nah, bro. The thing is that I am, I'm very appreciative of football is because I never grew up loving football. Like I was a basketball player, and so growing up, I wasn't like, oh, this is what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, it's just something like all my friends did, you know, we all hung out. I remember I told my mom, I'm like, mom, like you ain't got to buy me cleats this year. Like Mm -hmm. this is my freshman year. I'm like, I ain't playing football. Like I'm just going to hoop run track. All my friends play football. So I'm like, what am I going to do after (laughs) school? So, and you know, all of them play JV varsity. I started on the freshman team. So, I mean, you you can go back to the date. Like I, I've been, I've been grinding. Mm-hmm. Started on the freshman <clears throat> team, then went to the JV, did half, then finally made varsity, and then you go to the UWs, and then it's, I mean, it's just been an uphill climb mm-hmm. the whole time. But and, and Evergreen, this your baby for the rest of your life. For the rest of my life. <laughs> mm. I mean, I put a lot of effort and time. Like I, I'm out there. I, I caddy for our juniors. Um, like I am extremely passionate. I love golf. <laughs> you in love? You in love with golf, huh? I'm in love does, with golf. Does, does it love you back? I don't know. We all got that toxic girlfriend at some point in our life, right? That's golf. <laughs> golf uh, is toxic because yeah. it's a roller coaster. Beautiful wife, Marissa. Yeah. By, by the way, I want to real quick. I want to give a shout out to Marissa. And Marissa, I just want to say this. I have to say it. You have improved this man's style so much. I mean, you she have has, done a yeah. fantastic she definitely has. job. I, I will say, though, like, I mean, I'm starting to be able to put it. I'm not like the most size. I, I mean, <laughs> I ain't G. Scott. I mean, you got the shiny shoes. You come you got correct the fit. every yeah. day. Every day. You come correct every you day. You do. You look nice. Oh, thank you, bro. You look nice. Bro, thank you. But, but this is about Marissa. But Marissa. Yeah, no, she definitely, she definitely, I mean... Look, she is the glue to our family. Like three kids now, three kids, three daughters, three girls, Riley, Reese, and Remy. And I mean, she definitely keeps our household together. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't do the evergreen stuff if because yeah. there were there were time there were days where I'm like six a.m. to like ten p.m. when we were building it out and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like that's how much time. And she held it down at home. And um, yeah, none of that would be possible. Like if I didn't have her, you know, holding it down and, yeah. and keeping things together. No. Any no problem. Anybody in your life that you argue with almost every day? I'm in a group chat <laughs> with two guys and <laughs> one person, uh, he he always want to like argue about something. He Love stay mad argue. about something. Stay mad. About something. Yeah. Like, it can never be like one day of just like it's just CNN all day, <laughs> all day, and he just mad, and then he mad. You know what? We talking about G Scott here, by the way. <laughs> so me and Doug and G, we're in a group chat, and G, Doug can say something. Boom! I can like it. G, come mm-hmm. on. You always like Doug stuff. Uh-huh. You don't ever like my conversation. You don't like never. my text block. It never does. Never does. As a matter of fact, the two of you. The two of you, y'all like each other's comments all the time. I'll say something, dead air. Not a thing. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, I sent a picture of the two of them sitting next to each other. By the way, they the just one celebrated. I sent you? Y- yes. Yes. <laughs> Ask them. I, I took the picture you sent me of you guys getting your rings nine yeah. years ago, right, for Super Bowl 48. Um, and took the picture of them two sitting next to each other in a suit. The only time you'll see Doug in a suit. The only time you'll see Jermaine in a suit. But the two of them are in a suit getting the rings, and I sent it to him, and I said, this is why 
I argue with y'all all the time because y'all are two peas in a pod. And they say anything? Most of the time. Here, look, I, I want to say something. About I, 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 no, they ain't responding. Then the Doug's like, yeah, that's my guy. And then <laughs> Jermaine loves it. Like, whatever. <laughs> I want to say something about Doug, though. Like, that is my dog. Like, to this day. Like, Doug and I are very opposite. Personality wise, like I said, the confrontational, like me, I'm not, I'm not as, I'm not a controversial person. And so like some of the things that he does really well, you know, you hang out with people long enough, you pick up traits, right? And so, you know, <laughs> you, you learn how to be controversial a little bit. Like, Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah for sure. And <laughs> I mean... Him and I, like, our relationship has definitely grown throughout the years. But, like, that's my dog. Like, if there's a person you just go out there to battle with, like, I'm bringing Doug Baldwin every single time. Even if I'm going against KJ. <laughs> the, best thing you can, the best thing you can do against Doug is compliment him and tell him how great he is. Yeah. You yes. do that, you actually will make him uncomfortable yes. and you'll make him weak. <laughs> yes. The worst thing you can do, the that's worst thing you can do. Is tell him he can't do something. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, that's hey, funny. curse! You have pressed me one time though. When you I probably do. don't remember this. Ooh. It was in the locker room. Ooh. The receivers was acting silly, dancing, doing something. I don't I, even sound like us. The receivers was dancing, doing something funny, silly, and, the, and I just gave y'all this look like these niggas here. You got up. I mean, what the hell are you looking at, KJ? Ooh. What the hell is wrong with you? We can't have fun. You don't remember this? I don't. Ooh. But I believe that KJ, here's one thing about KJ though. KJ, KJ try to be a bully, especially in practice. No, I don't. Yes, you you are a bully and he talked the most shit. No, I don't. You, that's such a lie. He talked the most shit. He tried to be a bully in practice. And then when he get out there, like, I mean, you look at him. He's like, he sometimes have like this, like always this intense face. And he always just want to, like, he ain't mad about everything like you, but, like. <laughs> I be chilling, bro. He, I be chilling, um, dog. Hey, admit, I'll be it, chilling. admit it, though. As far as position groups, Ken Norton Jr. had them dudes different, huh? A good difference. They always end by curfew, say and do the right thing, really you coachable. Think you guys had the best group? I feel like our group. Collectively. Collectively was the group that held the team together. Yeah. The whole team together? Oh, the defense, at least. I'll put that against anybody. From coaches to players. Yeah. I'll stand on that to my dying, my dying day. But anyway, this was... How long was this? It was probably about like an hour and a half. Curse. We yeah. appreciate you, dog. Appreciate you guys. Just from um, friend to friend, bro. Just thank you for coming on. Love you, bro. He's a phenomenal teammate, phenomenal human being. I'm very happy for Evergreen and family together, your peace of mind together, bro. That's that's special. Appreciate that. So love you, dog. Thank you, brother. Love you too. Appreciate you, man. And we never argue when we're together. <laughs> but when Doug is around, we argue. But thanks yeah. for coming hey, on. Hey, and remember, if you go do something, do it the right way. Yes! <laughs> that's your tagline? Yeah, shout out to my brother Montez Pfeiffer. Hey. That's his tagline? That's the first time ever. First time he ever used it. Oh, okay. Good. That's actually, I like that. You're going to do something, do it the right way? Yeah. <laughs>